Hi guys, Sean here from DigiDirect. Today, we're taking a look at the Panasonic BS1H, which is the box camera version of the S1H. Now, uh, this takes many of the features and specs from the S1H, puts it into a box camera form factor. This conveys a number of advantages, like smaller size and weight, more modularity, and uh, more connection inputs and outputs, but also some disadvantages, like the lack of a screen uh, or grip on the camera. Now I'm going to be splitting the video up into two parts. In the first part, we're going to discuss the BS1H, its features and specs. I'll show you some sample footage that I shot with it, and we'll talk about why you might choose the BS1H over the S1H. In the second part, I'm going to walk you through a, a kit, a small rig series of accessories that I use to rig up the camera into a good shooting rig. Uh, this is important because having a good rig on this camera can really mitigate some of the downsides of the form factor, like the no screen and no grip on the camera. So I think it's an important area to cover. I should mention I'm shooting this right now on the BS1H uh, and this uh, footage you see right now as well as any other sample footage that I show you was shot using the Panasonic 35mm f1.8 lens. It's a new lens that came out near the end of 2021. All right, without any further ado, let's take a look at the body. Obviously the main thing about the BS1H is that it's a box camera. The body is almost identical to Panasonic's previous box camera, the BGH1 which is impressive considering that the BS1H is a full frame sensor while the BGH1 is only micro four thirds. This form factor is quite a bit smaller and lighter than the S1H. It's built to be very modular as evidenced by the series of 11 quarter 20 mounts around the body, allowing for customized rigging. There are four custom uh, function buttons at the front. There's also an operation lock switch, which locks all of the buttons to stop anything from being pressed accidentally. On the top, we have a few more control buttons, including the record button and the menu control wheel, uh, which is the main way that you're going to be adjusting settings on this camera, since we don't have the range of dedicated exposure dials like on the S1H, which is one other potential downside of the form factor here. On the left side, we have the heat management system and fan, as well as dual UHS-2 compatible SD card slots that support hot swapping for continuous recording. On the back we have all the connection points and this is a notable area of improvement over the S1H and one major reason to favor the BS1H. In addition to the standard mic, headphone, USB and HDMI ports, the BS1H has extra connections not found on the S1H. It has a locking SDI port. Note this is a 3G SDI so it only outputs 1080. This means it's primarily meant for monitoring not from uh, outputting recording data. You'll still be using the HDMI to output raw video or 4K to external recorders, not this SDI port. There's a time code connection as well as GenLock, which is really important if you're going to be syncing cameras together. Finally, there's also an Ethernet port, which supports power over Ethernet, so you can power the camera, transmit video, and operate the camera with a single cable. The Lumix Tether for Multicam app can be used to have one computer control up to 12 cameras via Ethernet. It also uses the much larger Panasonic Pro video batteries, and these last forever. It also has DC input to power the camera. Of course, as already mentioned, we're missing some notable features here, like any kind of screen or a grip to comfortably hold the camera. This is why you're really going to want to kit the camera up with a monitor and rig, which we'll look at in the second part of this video. Inside the BS1H is a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, and that is identical to what's on the S1H, the same sensor. So you're not gonna get any difference in picture quality between the S1H and the BS1H. And that's a good thing because the S1H has fantastic picture quality. Now, I'm referring to picture quality, I really mean video quality because the BS1H has no photo capabilities at all. This is purely a cinema shooter. Now, one other thing that is missing on the BS1H compared to the S1H is the in-body image stabilization system. On the S1H, we had a pretty robust IBIS system. Uh, that is not here on the BS1H, so that is one downside. Your handheld video shots are gonna need more stabilization or else they'll be a lot shakier than they would be on the S1H handheld. The video features on the BS1H are largely the same as the S1H, but it's worth covering as they are quite high end. The camera shoots awesome looking 4K video. Cinema 4K and 4K UHD are actually captured in 6K and downsampled, which is partly why it looks so good. It can shoot 4K 60 uh, for beautiful slow motion footage in 4K. Although note, when shooting 4K 60, you do have to go to Super 35, which means you introduce a crop. Uh, the variable frame rate feature here uh, allows you to shoot 1080 at up to 180 frames per second. It can even shoot 5.9K, which allows for ultra high resolution shooting or as a means to crop in on a shot while still maintaining 4K resolution. It can record H.264, long GOP, H.264 all intra, H.265 HEVC in eight or 10 bit. There's quite a range of options for cine professionals to use what they need. 
It has V-Log for 14 stops of dynamic range, and you can see here how much more info that captures in a high contrast setting compared to the standard picture profile. It also has HLG profiles. The BS1H can output raw video data via the full-size HDMI port to an external recorder in Blackmagic RAW or Apple ProRes RAW. It can output full frame 5.9K at 30p or Super 35 Cinema K at up to 60 frames per second and anamorphic 4x3 at 3.5K in 12-bit RAW. It can even record internally and externally simultaneously. Thanks to that heatsink system, there is no record limit regardless of the resolution or frame rate that you're shooting in. Finally, the camera can live stream at up to 4K 60. All in all, that's quite an impressive suite of video features, codecs, and quality. So it's clear now that there are a number of advantages, but also disadvantages of the BS1H compared to the S1H. Advantages include the smaller size and weight, the modularity potential, and in particular, the networking and connectivity possibilities of the camera. Disadvantages is the fact that there's no uh, photo mode at all, no in-body image stabilization, no screen or grip on the camera, and also no dedicated exposure control dials on the camera. In my mind, this puts the BS1H solely in the realm of the semi-professional uh, or higher cinema shooter, someone who can really take advantage of that modularity of the camera and of the networking and connectivity uh, features on it. Uh, for someone who's a more casual shooter, especially if you're interested in a photo as well as video, I would recommend the more traditional S1H body design. So now, however, let's move to the second part of the video where I'm gonna discuss the rig that I used to shoot with this camera. So all of these uh, items that I'm gonna be looking at here, these are small rig items. Small rig is a company that makes a lot of these kind of cages uh, and accessories to kind of build up a rig and a kit around a camera. I'm going to link all of the items that I mentioned into the video description so you can check them all out if you like. Um, now keep in mind, this is only one possibility. There's certainly any number of combinations you could rig this up, but this is a simple and elegant way to do it. I found at least, it met my needs. To start, I'm using the small rig cage for the BS1H or BGH1. It's the same cage, it fits both cameras. This adds protection to the camera, but it also adds a ton of quarter 20 and 3 8 connection points without adding very much bulk. It even has a spot for a side handle on the right side here. I'm actually not utilizing that, uh, but something like the small rig right side wooden grip could be added here if you wanted more handheld stability. This cage is the base for the rig, adding those additional connection points along the sides, top, front and back is what allows you to rig it in almost unlimited combinations. I've added my tripod's quick release plate at the bottom and note there is a magnetic tightening tool stored at the base of the cage. Next, I've added the small rig universal airy locating handle. I've put this right on the top and this is my main grip for the camera. It's a comfortable grip and it again has tons of connection points all throughout it. It also has this magnetic Allen key holder so I always have one handy which is nice. Next, I've attached the small rig swivel and tilt adjustable monitor mount at the front of the handle because this is where I'm going to attach my external monitor. I've used an Atomos Ninja 5, which I've put into its own dedicated small rig cage. Uh, this mounts right on the swivel mount and I can adjust the angle as needed, even flipping it all the way around if I'm shooting myself. From there, I just have to attach an HDMI cable from the camera to the Ninja 5. I've used the 30 centimeter Atomos coiled cable, but as you can see, it's a little bit tense. Uh, I would suggest a slightly longer cable and you can coil any excess length around the bottom of the top handle. The only thing I don't have covered here is my external mic uh, because the top handle blocks the hot shoe on the camera itself. That's easily solved though by adding a small rig cold shoe, which I could attach on the side of the cage. For example, a small Rode Video Mic Go would fit perfectly here. Finally, as an extra bonus, I've used the small rig matte box mini on the front of the camera. This is rig independent actually, since it attaches to the front of the lens rather than to the rigging. Uh, it's carbon fiber, so it's very lightweight. It gives me a top flag to block glare, and of course the ability to slot in filters. So that's what I've been using to shoot with the BS1H. I found that to be a fairly simple uh, yet effective rig. It met all of my shooting needs without being too complicated, too many moving parts. I also really liked that when I needed to transport the camera, I just detached the whole top handle assembly and the two pieces just went into a simple shoulder bag and that was that. I hope you found this video helpful in helping you decide whether the BS1H is right for you or not. And if so, giving you some ideas on how you could rig up the camera for your own needs. Now, all of the products that I've mentioned today uh, are available on our website at www.digidirect.com.au or in one of our stores. We have stores in the Sydney CBD, Bondi Junction, Miranda, the Brisbane and Melbourne CBD, and Cannington, Western Australia, which is just outside the Perth CBD. Thanks, guys. Take care.